Welcome on in, welcome on in, welcome on in. What's going on, everybody? I'm Zach Peter, host of the No Filter with Zach Peter podcast, the ultimate tea spilling professional. And boy, do we have some tea to spill today. So we just wrapped reading House of Hilton in our Bravo book club, which is really good, better than I expected. We broke down the whole book and all five parts are now available on YouTube, youtube.com slash just plain Zach. After wrapping the book, I think I've now solved the case of who stole Kim's goddamn house. Kyle Richards, we're looking at you. Mauricio, are you are you complicit in this too? Should I put on my Elwood's cap and break it down? Well, so what happened was their mother, Big Kathy, that was her nickname, Big Kathy, because she's also Kathy Hilton is named after Kathy. So we have little Kathy and big Kathy, which is how they're referred to in house of Hilton. So big Kathy left LA to go move to Palm desert to find herself a wealthy sugar daddy to take care of her. She bought an investment home in Indian Wells and then soon found herself a fourth husband out at the bars where she liked to scout him. So she found she finds husband number four. His name is Bob. She thought Bob had money, but Bob really just had a good way with words and allured her with the facade of money, the illusion of money. So she's like, I'm going to ditch those L.A. guys and find me a real one in Palm Desert. Well, Looks like the smoke and mirrors are just as great. They work just as well in Indian Wells. So from what it sounds like in the book, House of Hilton, she didn't really like Bob and actually hated his kids. And that's okay because they hated her just as much because they thought that she was using their dad, um, which she kind of was. So they were able to really scope her out as a gold digger. Shane, what's what's the Kanye West song? Um, she came for money. Well, I'm in need. Damn, she's a trifling friend indeed. Oh, she's a gold digger. Way over town. That digs on me. Well, that that's Bob's song. Because Bob was hella in love with Big Kathy. He was like, yeah, give me some Big Kathy. I like all that. I like all that Kathy. I don't want a little Kathy. I want all that Kathy. Bob wanted all the Kathy. And he got all the Kathy. But anyway... Big Kathy convinced Bob to sell his house because she's like, you have a house. I have a house. Why do we need two houses? You sell your house and let's use that money from the sale to renovate my house in Indian Wells, which he did because he loved him some Big Kathy, presumably thinking that this is going to be their forever home. So Big Kathy and Bob have themselves Kathy's home, which... I mean, I would understand how when you get married, you would think that, you know, this would be your home together. But she never ended up putting his name on the house. It was always her house. And if you actually read the book, the whole first section is dedicated mostly to her. Um, And she's a real sunny delight. So she ultimately ends up passing away and leaves poor Bob with nothing. Not a zilch. And so she ends up leaving the house that Bob's house money paid for for the renovations, which if you look at it, it wasn't that. If you actually see the house there, the renovations weren't all of that. It was still a very out of date house. But anyway, she ends up leaving the house to her three girls divided evenly. And this was Kim's alleged goddamn house. So after Big Kathy passed, Bob was allowed to live there for one year as long as he didn't bring any women over. Literally her husband and in her will doesn't leave him anything and says, you know, even though I I passed away, he's allowed to live there, but he can only live there for 12 months. And the one stipulation is that he's not allowed to bring anybody or any women over because, because if he does, then that voids this will. And then he has to go and he has to, who knows where he has to go, but he just, he has to go and he can't stay here. Okay, he's about to get fired from Royal Housewives of Kathy Land. So Kim Richards was the one who was responsible for overseeing the house and making sure that Bob had no hoes that he was bringing over to the house. That was until the year was up. And then once the year was up, she kicked him out. So poor Bob ended up dying later with nothing. Um, The three girls ended up having the house as their own. And I guess they would use it similar to the way Kathy or sorry, not Kathy, um, the way Kyle has like vacation homes in Palm desert, you know, and they go out to visit like La Quinta and stuff. This was 
I guess, the house that they used to use before. And even when you watch the earlier season of seasons of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, I think it was in season two, they talk about the house and they're like, oh, this is our mother's house and we have so many memories here and this is grandma's blanket. And, you know, it's very endearing of like the memories that they had at that house. Although I don't, I don't think from what the book says, they didn't grow up in that house. It was a house that they, that their mother bought once they were grown because, you know, she was ready to just ditch the L.A. life and find herself a sugar daddy out in Palm Desert. Anyway, Kyle later ends up taking out a mortgage and buys out her two sisters. Kyle or Kyle buys out Kathy and Kim buys their shares out of the house. Kim was strapped for cash at the time, needed a loan, so she decided she was going to take 20000 out of her share of the house. She later wanted to buy back in once, I guess, money was on the up and up, you know, when she started doing the old Witch Mountain conferences, you know, like the Comic Cons before, like, people back in the day. Um, and she was, like, signing headshots of when she was, like, five years old as an acting, as an actress. Um but anyway, Kyle wasn't interested in letting her back in, presumably because Kathy was already out too. So at this point, you know, it was her house. She took out the mortgage on it. For whatever reason, she didn't want to give Kim her share back into the house, which also like if you've already cashed out, if you've already, you know, decided you were done with it. I mean, I assume being that this was like around the time, like I would assume Kim wanted back. I don't know. I'm trying to think of like what the timeline would be. It sounds like all of this happened before they joined Housewives in season one, because it was the season one finale where we see Kim telling Kyle, you stole my goddamn house. And then it was season two where we actually get to see the goddamn house and they start to talk about the goddamn house. And Kyle ends up selling the goddamn house in 2014. It's unclear of when Kim needed to take the money out and when Kyle bought her sisters out of the house because you even see in Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, they refer to the house in the lower thirds as Kyle's house. It's unclear what that exact timeline is, especially because the book was published mid-2000s. This had to have happened maybe shortly after Big Kathy died, which she died like in early to, in the early 2000s. So this all happened some time after Big Kathy passed away in 2010, which is when I believe the first season of Royal Housewives of Beverly Hills taped. So it seems like there was clearly some time in between everything. But anyway, Kyle ends up selling the house in 2014. She didn't make much of a profit off of it, so it's unclear why she actually sold it. Maybe just to have cash on hand to invest in other better properties. You know, fix, like let's take this money, invest it into other houses out in Palm Desert because we do know that they have multiple properties out there as does big cat or as does little Kathy Kathy Hilton Kim doesn't seem to have anything if anything this was the only goddamn house she ever really owned so long story short is Kim signed over her goddamn house and it was never her goddamn house it was their goddamn house it was Kyle Kathy and Kim's house so it wasn't like it was Kim's house and then Kyle came in and took the house from her she literally took the house over, allowed Kim to take out her loan, live her life, buy whatever she was buying at the time. We don't need to imply it. You know, Brandy Glanville said that she was, you know, doing something in the bathroom all night long. Bitch. Not throwing out any accusations. Brandy, Brandy did enough of that. So why do I need to? Anyway, she needed the cash. Kyle bought her out. It seems like, you know, they all kind of came to the agreement. Kathy did the same thing. If anything, I think Big Kathy stole Bob's goddamn money to renovate the house that she didn't even end up leaving to him. So if anything, this was Bob's goddamn house, or at least Bob and Kathy. No, it should have been Bob's goddamn house because it was Kathy's house, and this was her husband, and they shared the home together, and he was still living in the house. Kim, Kathy, and Kyle did not need the house. They had no involvement in it. But I understand how, like, as the mother, you want to leave something to your children. Property is, like, you know, one of the best things that you can leave them. I get it. But Bob, it was literally the house, the goddamn house that Bob was living in, and he didn't get jack shit out of it. And Kim Richards is the one that's bitter about it. <sighs> so, no, Kim, I don't think Kyle stole Kim's goddamn house. I think Kim cashed out and then was mad that Kyle didn't want to let her back in. But it's like, cash me outside, girl. Sorry, you're outside already, and we're not letting you back into the goddamn house, Kim. That was your bad. You shouldn't have cashed out. It's a done deal, okay? 
What do you guys think? Do you think that Kyle stole Kim's goddamn house? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for all the latest reality TVT. And don't miss new episodes of Hashtag No Filter with Zach Peter, available on all major podcast platforms. We release new episodes every Monday, Wednesday, and rebroadcasts on Friday. And we go live every Tuesday night for book club and Thursday night to spill some late night tea. So... There you have it. We have Bravo Book Club that we break down every Tuesday evening here on the YouTube channel. We also do it on Instagram at No Filter with Zach. Every Tuesday evening, we break down another Bravo Liberty book. We just finished House of Hilton, so all five parts of House of Hilton's Bravo Book Club are available on the YouTube channel. We are just starting Brandy Glanville's book, Drinking and Tweeting, which is to coincide with the airing of Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip Season 2, which is now airing on Peacock. But yeah, if you need something to do this weekend, catch up on Bravo Book Club. Get yourself a copy of Brandy Glanville's books so that we can capture that. But we've also done Dorinda's book. We've done Margaret Joseph's book. We've done Stassi's book. We've done Erica Jane's book. We've done Not All Diamonds and Rosé. So lots of good books in the Bravo Book Club collection. There's a whole playlist dedicated to it. So you guys can check that out right now. Get some of my Housewives-inspired wine. It is no filter wine. We have a fizzy, light, crisp rosé and a fizzy, white, light, crisp white wine. Perfect for summer. Light, delicious, bubbly. Packs a punch with 13% alcohol by volume, but less than a gram of sugar. And it's available now at nofilterwine.com. It must be 21 or older to order. And please sip responsibly. But get ready because you will be litty city with that 13% alcohol by volume. Head over to nofilterwine.com. If you guys want to give me a follow personally, you can follow me at Just Plain Zach or follow the podcast at No Filter with Zach. And if you haven't done so yet, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification button too if you want the tea. I'll open those notifications as soon as it drops. All right, guys. Talk to you later. Bye.